man behind the badge. A fish is like a woman. If you want to hook one, first you have to intrigue her. And the best kind of bit to use is something with a lot of sparkle. Good evening, I'm Charles Bigfoot. This, they tell me, is the best kind of bait to use if you want to land a smallmouth bass. To illustrate my story tonight, I brought you to this den. These lures are guaranteed to land you the biggest trout you can imagine. If your taste runs to muskies, try these. But, if you're going after the biggest fish of all, this is the kind of bait you use. Gilt edged, printed on the best bond paper, gold embossed lettering, oil stocked. Guaranteed by its manufacturer to land the tastiest fish of all, the human fish, genus sucker. Who uses this kind of bait? Confidence men. Who leaps at it? Anybody who wants something for nothing. And who protects the gullible? For even the sucker deserves some chance. Well, that job falls to the Bureau of Securities. And in Lincoln, Nebraska, the office is located in the Capitol Building. And the man in charge is both assistant director of banking and head man of the Nebraska branch of the Bureau, Harold Johnson. Tonight's Man Behind the Badge. Yesterday afternoon, uh, this city fuller, uh, no offense, uh, I was out throwing feed to my chickens, and my missus called me into the kitchen where she's sitting gabbing with this city fella. Says he's a salesman and calls himself uh, Hunter Conklin. Hunter Conklin. Yeah, he spells it with a C. Now, first he tries to sell me a television set, but before I know it, we're talking oil. Oil? Yeah, says he knows of an oil well down in Oklahoma, and he wants to sell me a partnership for $3,000. Now, me, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of interested, but not my wife. She shoes this fellow away, and, well, I go back out feeding my chickens. Isn't that all that happened? Well, no. I, I bedded down the cows and... No, I mean with Mr. Conklin. Oh, oh, him. Well, yeah, I reckon that's about all that happened. Uh, like I said, me and my missus was talking it over last night, and we figured that a man that wants to sell an oil well for $3,000 is either crazy or he's a crook. Uh, would that be right? More likely the latter. I think you did the smart thing in coming here. Well, that's exactly what I told my missus. Sarah said I'm going into Lincoln tell them all about it. Smart thing to do. If more people followed your example, there'd be fewer regrets. Well, I gotta get back to the farm, Mr. Johnson. If you're ever out in my neighborhood, stop by. Always got time for a talk. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Lawrence, run through the files and see if we have anything on a Hunter Conklin. Yes, spelled with a C. C-O-N-K-L-I-N. Johnson's own file system was gone over thoroughly, but there was no man on record to fit that name or description. A cross-check was made, but nothing was found. A request was made to the local, state, and federal agencies, and only one positive return was received. Two years ago in Montana, a man fitting that description was arrested, but no charges were pressed. This man's method of operation had been to work the farm districts. Nothing else arrived, and so the information was filed under probable suspects, and the office routine continued. Hunter Conklin seemed to have moved on. I was wondering if I could use your phone. My car went dead on the highway, and I'd like to call my auto club if I may. You're not from around here, are you? No, oh, no, ma'am. I'm just driving through your wonderful state. Well, I suppose it'll be all right. The phone's in the living room. Well, I, I certainly appreciate it. Uh, right over on the table. Thank you. I wouldn't break down near a garage that had to happen out on the highway. Oh, hello? Would you give me the number of the American Automobile Association, please? Thank you. Hello? 
This is Mr. Hunter Conklin speaking. My membership number is 70289B. Hmm? My car went dead on Highway 63, oh, about a mile from the turnoff, and I... An hour? Look, it's hot in that sun. Can't you make it sooner? Well, okay, I'll wait. Thanks. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but as long as you have to wait. Well, my good fortune to have happened on a, on a home with such a thoughtful and charming hostess. Thank you. My name is Hunter Conklin, Mrs. Miss Catherine Leroy. Well, uh, won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. There'll be quite a wait in that late afternoon sun. Well, it, it does get kind of warm this time of the year. Yeah. I've been thinking of driving up to Canada for a few weeks. Escape the heat. Oh, are you uh, on a vacation? <laughs> I'm always on vacation. <laughs> you must be very lucky. Most people I know have to work their life away. Oh, I work too. I'm a salesman. Oh, well, what do you sell? I mean, well, you talk as though time meant nothing. Well, it doesn't. For one thing, I sell charm. <laughs> well, there must be something more substantial to go with it. Oh, there is. Matter of fact, I sell oil wells. Oh, I didn't know you sold oil wells. I thought you dug for them. Well, a good friend of mine in Oklahoma, father of a war buddy, uh, has a small farm, and there's oil on the farm. Oh, it must be quite thrilling to find yourself rich, able to travel, to, to meet people. Yes, but you see, he lost his son in the war. I'm sorry. He works the farm and neglects the oil. He barely makes enough to live. He's got a problem. A problem? With oil on his land? Oh, he's had his office from all the big oil companies, but, well, he's lived alone too long. He's suspicious of people. Most people who live alone get that way. There's a whole world waiting for them. All they have to do is walk out and meet it. It's not that easy. Well, it is if you have money. I'm a fine one to talk about money. To me, it's just something to spend. Well, this friend of mine, because his son and I were friends, well, he, he's offered his land to me for $5,000. 5000 That's all he wants. He set the price himself. I told him I could, I could lease it to one of the big oil companies for 50000 And with the royalties per barrel in the following years, well, you can see what it means. Yes, I can. I thought I'd take my half and revisit Rio de Janeiro. You been to Rio? I've never been out of Nebraska. I rank it with Paris. Uh, you said your half. Oh, that's right. I know some men in Canada who finance the project. I told you I spend my money as fast as I make it. Well, now, perhaps if you had exercised a little thrift, then... Thrift? Thrift is for the insecure and the frightened. You know, it's a shame to split it with these Canadian chaps. They have more money than they know what to do with as it is. Well, I better start walking to my car. Wouldn't you care for another drink? Uh, no, thank you. It's been a pleasure meeting you, Miss Leroy. Uh, are you driving right on? Well, I make no rigid plans. I live my life as it happens. I wish I could enjoy that luxury. All you need is the right philosophy and the right amount of money. I'm afraid I don't have either. And my advice is to look for them, Catherine. Don't people call you Catherine? They call me Miss Leroy. Well, that's their misfortune. I plan to spend a couple of days in Lincoln. If I get back this way, I'll call on you. Would you? I mean, that would be very nice. Goodbye, Catherine. No further inquiries or complaints were received on Hunter Conklin. His file remained inactive. Harold Johnson's office continued on its regular routine of checking on gold mines, oil wells, and uranium strikes. But these are the magic words used by the modern day con man. These are the get rich quick words, which the sucker listens to, while he falls under the spell of the phonies, the charlatans, the easy money men who speak them. Hunter? Catherine. Catherine. 
Susan, what have you done to yourself? You don't like it, Hunter. Like it? I love it while you're a new person. Oh, well, the things you said last time about me being afraid to live, I... I had it sent from Chicago. Well, it looks like it came from Paris. Or Rio. Or heaven. Why, I can't believe it. You do like it then, Hunter? I mean, me. Oh, Captain, it's unbelievable. When you called me and told me you had a surprise for oh, me, I... Oh, this is only part of it. Come over here. Well, what's this? Open it. And there, there must be almost $5,000 in here. Exactly $5,000, and it's for you. I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, for the oil well, so that we can be partners. Catherine, I never in a million years. Oh, Hunter, you will teach me how to live, won't you? Oh, Catherine, you'll learn, you'll learn. To consummate the oil lease, Hunter Conklin told Catherine he had to leave Nebraska for a week. It was a tearful parting, but Catherine's eyes were dried by the thought that he would be back in two weeks. By the end of the fourth week, she was worried. Anything could have happened to him. A train wreck, auto accident, hold up. She was frantic enough to swallow her pride and start looking. Look, this is the third time this week you've been in here. See? Here's your address. If he calls any time, day or night, I remember. But he said he would be here on the 23rd of last month. Maybe he's been delayed. But it's been three weeks since then. I haven't even gotten a postcard. Yes, ma'am. But he might be hurt. Or, or worse. Are you sure he said the Bryan Hotel? We've had a convention in town. Maybe he's checked in at some other one. Of course. Oh, why didn't I think of that? Uh, try the tap. A lot of traveling men stay there. The rates are a little lower. That would make no difference to Mr. Conklin. Money means nothing to him. Yes, ma'am. Catherine Leroy tried another hotel, but the answer was the same. It made little or no difference. The name of the hotel, no one had ever heard of it. And so Catherine Leroy kept searching and kept failing, and finally, like others who had faced this same problem, came to the office of Harold Johnson, Bureau of Securities. I want to apologize again for calling you at that late hour. Well, that's perfectly all right. Uh, I hope you took my advice and got a good night's sleep. I'm afraid I'm a little out of the habit. Uh, won't you be seated, please? As I told you last night, I, I went to all the hotels, the missing persons, the police. They told me to call you. I'll do the best I can. I don't know which way to turn. I just don't. Well, you gave me a pretty comprehensive story last night. However, there are one or two points that I'd like to get straight. Anything, anything at all. Well, do you have any proof that you gave him the money? Well, only what I told you last night and, uh, and this. Received from Miss Catherine Leroy the sum of $5,000. Well, it's nicely phrased, but it doesn't say for what. Where's the oil lease? He was going to bring that back with him. We'll do the best we can to find him. Thank you. They say I'm a proud woman, Mr. Johnson. We all make mistakes. A proud old maid who was completely self-sufficient. I'm sorry, Miss Leroy. We'll try to get your money back. The money? He sold me an oil well for $5,000. Oh, I needed the money very badly. But he sold me something else. I, I needed even more. immediately. Bureau of Securities, Mr. Johnson's office. Captain Henderson, State Police. Captain Henderson? How are you? I'm looking for a man who goes under the name of Conklin. Yeah, he's a con man. Works the phony oil well game. Age, um, 37. Height, 5'11". Weight, 170. Smooth appearance, smoother talker. Anyone on the district, anyone who could point a finger to Hunter Conklin was questioned. Highways leading in and out of town. A tracer was put out, and for two months, Harold Johnson kept following every possible lead, no matter how slim. It looked hopeless. 
Then he got a phone call. She wouldn't give her name. All she knew was that some smooth talker was trying to sell her an oil well. And she was from Brooklyn and knew how they sold the Brooklyn Bridge. Sorry to trouble you, Billy. No trouble at all, Sheriff. Uh, take a look at the register, Mr. Johnson. Miss Leroy said she's been here before. Asking for Mr. Conklin. I'm sorry, lady, but he's not registered here. You can see for yourself. But the woman who called me said the man we're looking for is registered in room 346. Oh. 346, here it is. Name is Thomas. We'll take a look anyway, Billy. All right. There it is. Stay over there, out of sight. Billy. Yeah? My name is Harold Johnson. Well, I'm sorry, but... And this is Miss Catherine Leroy. Oh, Catherine, I, I... I was just going to call you. Look, come in. All of you, come in. Well, what's the matter? Why doesn't somebody say something? This is the sheriff. You're under arrest. Get your coat. I didn't think you'd come. Mr. Johnson said I shouldn't. Naturally. It's his job to send people to jail. He doesn't care if they're innocent or guilty. Each year he has to convict so many people or he's out of a job. Hunter, what happened to the money? You won't believe me. If you tell me the truth. I was in trouble, Catherine. Desperate trouble. I, I owed some money to some people. Not the kind of people you'd ever meet. I owed them $5,000. They'd kill a man for a lot less. How can I believe that? How can I? I don't expect you to. You're the reason I'm here. I don't know what to believe anymore. Look, their entire case depends on your testimony. I took $5,000 from you, I admit it. I took it to buy an oil well, I admit that. But when I get out of here, I can still wind up the deal. Oh, Hunter, please. But I wrote to my friend, I explained the situation. He's holding the option for me. You didn't write to me. You didn't call. How could I? What should I have written? Dear Catherine, I took your money to pay a debt to save my life, love hunter. But I would have understood. Understood? I was going to teach you how to live, Catherine. I, I thought you knew how to love. Three weeks later, the state of Nebraska presented its case against Hunter Conklin. The prosecutor gave his opening address to the court. He presented the background, listed off the various complaints received by the Bureau of Securities, offered a receipt in evidence, and then turned to the court clerk to call the chief witness for the state, a Miss Catherine Leroy. Where is she? I found her at home. Well, she knew she was going to be called today. Is she sick? No. Well, you talked to her. She must have said something. She did. She said, I refuse to testify. I just changed my mind. It's as simple as that. But why? Why? Because I wanted to. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson, but I have a million things to do. I'm very busy. Uh, what kind of a line have you tried to sell you this time? If you're finished. Oh, I'm sorry. Did he mention the oil well? The oil well? I believe he did. Would you care to look at that? Well, this is a lease. We bought it the day before yesterday. But he didn't have enough money to raise the bail. I said we bought it. You mean that you I gave... believe it's quite proper for a woman to go into a business partnership with her future husband. When are you getting married? The end of this week in Chicago. As I said before, Mr. Johnson, I have a million things to do, so if you don't mind... Of course. Uh, Miss Leroy. Yes? Uh, you won't be leaving for a day or so. Would you mind if I check this lease? Why? Well, just to satisfy myself. You're sure there's nothing wrong with it, aren't you? Of course. Then you won't have any objections. 
Mr. Johnson, you're a hard man to convince. Very hard, Miss Leroy. Some people have no faith. And some have too much. Good day, Miss Leroy. Mr. Johnson. Hmm? I think you ought to go home, sir. Oh, coffee. Just what I needed. Call didn't come in yet? No. No. I checked that lease. It's perfectly legal. Oh, you mean the language? Clarence Perry, Red Fork, Oklahoma. He owns the farm. I still want to check with him. If I have to sit by the phone for a week, I, I still want to check with him. Good night, Florence. Good night, Mr. Johnson. Johnson talked to a Mr. Clarence Perry of Red Fork, Oklahoma. And the next morning... Oh, Mr. Johnson, come in. Thank you, Mr. Roy. I'm sorry to have bothered you, but I'm leaving this afternoon. I wanted the lease back. Oh, here it is. Thank you. But it's a phony. What? Oh, there's a Mr. Perry, and he lives on the farm, but there's no oil there. Oh, but there must be. There isn't. But Hunter said that... Well, you've made a mistake. I know you did. Not this time. I'm taking the 3 o'clock for Chicago. I'm meeting Hunter. He won't be there. He will. He will. This isn't going to be pretty, Mr. Roy. But if you want to see him, you'll have to come to Omaha with me. You've arrested him again? Well, I won't testify. I won't. You can't talk me into it. After you see him, I won't have to. I know you've made a mistake. Now, what would he be doing in a place like this? You heard the desk clerk. He's registered. He'll be waiting for me in Chicago. I don't like to do this, Mr. Roy. I wish I didn't have to do it. Do you realize what you're doing to me? Would you rather have waited in the station in Chicago? This is 416. Oh. I knew you made a mistake. It's already after 11 o'clock. This won't take long. Yes? I'd like to talk to Mr. Hunter Conklin. Could I give him a message? I'd like to talk to Mr. Conklin. Well, I think I could help. I'm his wife. Conklin was brought to trial in Lincoln, Nebraska, and charged with obtaining money under false pretenses and selling unregistered securities. Chief witness for the state was Miss Catherine Leroy. The jury found for the state, and Conklin was sentenced to the Nebraska Penitentiary for a term of four years. Oil, gold, uranium, platinum. They'll sell you anything you want to buy, including a piece of the clear blue sky. That's why Nebraska and almost every other state has a Bureau of Securities. They work for you. But in order for them to work efficiently, You've got to work with them. Don't buy securities from a stranger. Check with the Bureau. And watch out for get-rich-quick proposals. Because the only time you can count on anyone getting something for nothing is when you give it to them. For one of these. Now this is Charles Bickford inviting you to be with us next week. And once again, you will see another authentic story of one whose duty it is to serve. A public servant dedicated to you, and whom you will meet as the man behind the badge.